Yo, welcome back to the channel. So today uh, I'm announcing a new product that I've been working on for the last month or so, and that is the Naked Black Magic screen extension. As you may know, up until now, my Naked Black Magic kits have only worked with firmware version 6.9.6, .6, simply because that's the latest firmware version that works uh, without having to plug the screen in. And as you know, when you make the camera naked, we remove the screen. Uh, having to plug the screen in to turn the camera on, like you have to do in later firmware versions, is a real pain and really difficult because of the position of the connector and that you have to put the screen on top of the PCB inside the carbon cage and it's just, yeah, it's a hassle. So I, everyone who runs my kit has to run firmware version 6.9.6. .6. This has been a known issue for a while now um, and up until recently I haven't really seen any need to use the later firmware versions. It doesn't really offer anything that you're missing by running the 6.9.6 .6 firmware version. I never saw any need to really develop a solution for being able to plug the screen in easily. Uh, there's been a couple of other people who have developed their own uh, solutions for plugging the screen in easily and I've tried to, uh, I did try to work with both of them for, but I won't go into details but for one reason or another uh, it didn't work out and they didn't really want to work with me it seemed and again at the time I wasn't really that bothered about it because yeah, the, as I said earlier, the, the later firmware versions don't really offer anything uh, that I would need or that I would want or that I feel that my customers would really need. However, about four or five weeks ago, Blackmagic uh, released an update for the Pocket 4K and the Pocket 6K that unlocked the gyro data that's always been inside these cameras. We've known for ages that there's a gyro chip inside, but Blackmagic has never released or released any firmware that actually uses the gyro data uh, for stabilization. Up until their recent firmware version, um, which unlocked the gyro data. So now if you update your Blackmagic camera, you, it records gyro data in the B-RAW file, and you can use that uh, to stabilize your footage. Now Blackmagic Design has got their own stabilization software built into Resolve now and you can use that when using the normal camera and it works okay. Uh, but what's more exciting is that the team at Gyroflow have managed to figure out how to use the gyro data as well and they've just recently actually added the, the ability to use B-RAW files within the Gyroflow software. So now you can put your be raw, Blackmagic raw file straight into Gyroflow and it pulls up the gyro data and the video file in there and you can stabilize your footage within Gyroflow and it's, and it's working really, really nicely. Since that came out, that's quite a nice feature to be able to have and well worth me uh, putting in the time and effort of developing my own screen extension solution so that we can unlock this feature for the naked Blackmagic cameras. So I won't bore you with the details of exactly how I figured out how to do it, but it really is quite straightforward. All, all I basically had to do was take the uh, flexible ribbon assembly off the back of the screen, rip the connectors off it, photograph both sides and work out where all the pins were going. Um, now, the issue with the connector that is on the Blackmagic that you plug the screen into is that it has limited mating cycles and is a little bit awkward to get to as well. So my solution converts the Blackmagic Molex connector into a, a standard ribbon cable connector. So it's really easy to just plug your screen in and power up the camera using the latest firmware or using any firmware. Uh, you can now use the screen to obviously view your feed and set your exposure and do all your settings like you would with the normal camera, um, all from this external device. Let's head over to the bench and I'll put one of these together so, and then you can get a closer look of how it actually works and how you put the kits together. These will be sold uh, 
I'm selling these already ready to go along with the ready to go cameras or obviously you can buy them as a kit and build your own. So uh, yeah, let's head over to the bench now and check it out. Okay, these are the components that come with the screen extension kit. Uh, you've got the screen surround, which is a resin printed part with four M3 threaded inserts for fitting the front and back carbon plates. Uh, these are the, that's the front plate, obviously leaving a big gap for the, so you can see the screen. And that's the rear plate that's got a little cutout for the buttons. Okay, so this is the PCB that fits onto the back of the screen. And as you can see, it's got those two buttons that I say pokes through the back, back, plate, back plate. Uh, the reason why I've done it like this is because didn't really need all six of the black magic buttons and by using the original black magic buttons like some other people have done means that the screen has to be quite a bit longer just to accommodate six buttons when in reality we only need two and if you look if you actually if you use the latest firmware you actually only need the playback button um, but <clears throat> You just need one button for entering the menu and one button, one button for entering the playback mode. We've got a ribbon cable connector there for connecting the screen and this is for connecting the touch control. And then this big one in the middle there is uh, for the main ribbon cable that connects the screen to the Blackmagic. This is the PCB that fits onto the Blackmagic itself. Uh, you can see there it's got the same connector, but this one has these uh, as being customized. If I show you this one here that doesn't have the additional parts added to it, you can just see that it's a plain ribbon cable. The ribbon cable can just go in at any angle, and if you were, connect if you were to connect the wrong pins uh, in there, then you could fry your black magic quite easily. So I knew that I needed to come up with my own uh, a little attachment to go on the end here to convert the connector into something a little bit easier to use. So what we have here is a kind of a, guidance, a guiding system that's so that the ribbon cable can just very easily just be guided straight into uh, the connector. I've also got this additional piece here so it makes it really easy to lift the clip up and down. So not everyone's got tiny little fingers or fingernails so it's got this additional little piece on the clip to make it really easy to pull in and out. And then as I said this guiding system just makes it so that it just slots straight in really easily. There's no messing around. Uh, what it prevents from happening you can't you can't put this in at a weird angle. Uh, you could maybe force it, you're not going to be able to accidentally put that in at a weird angle. So that just guides it in at the right, at the perfect way and slots straight in. And then you can just use the little connector, uh, pull the connector down and it's a nice solid connection. Uh, so it's nice and easy to, to plug the screen in and out. So when you remove the screen from the Blackmagic, you're going to have something like this. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is just remove the buttons well probably don't really need to remove those buttons let's just undo these and remove these two connectors and remove those two ribbons and just carefully guide that one out through the metal Like so, and now you don't need this bit. Obviously, I didn't I didn't need to take those off. Could have just left them on. So you, what you want to be left with is the screen with the two connectors hanging on it. Okay, so we're going to start by fitting this to the back plate. You can see that there's two pieces of VHB tape on the back. Um, don't take that off just yet. You just you want to gonna you're going to want to plug plug these ribbon cables into the connectors. Um, this connector is not the same as the Blackmagic one and it opens the other way. So just bear that in mind when you're doing this. So just flip the connector up. And this is quite fiddly for the best of times. And it's gonna be really fiddly for me to do and 
get on camera. But just Okay, so you'll see that these two little tabs that stick out either side will butt up against the connector and it should be nice and straight. So keep it straight and pull the tab down. There you go, so firmly in there, nice and secure. And this one's for the touch control and it's a little bit more, it's a little easier to get in. Still, it's not quite perfect and this one doesn't doesn't go all the way in unfortunately because it's quite a thick piece of flex so you just get it in like that and you can tell it's in because you can't pull it out that's it there we go so you've got both the connectors in and they're fitted and then go ahead and remove the VHB tape and stick it down in place You're just going to want to do it so there isn't any, so that the wires don't get pinched. Main one to concentrate on is this top one, and then just use the metal edge to line it up nicely. Like so. And now we have the back piece, now we have the screen PCB fitted can go ahead and fit the screen to the surround. You can see that uh, there's two sides to this. You can, one where you can, where the threaded inserts are fully exposed, one where they're not. The one where they're not is the front side. And you'll also see there is a slot at the bottom. So you want the slot at the bottom, and then you put the connectors over to the left-hand side. So just drop the ribbon cable through if you've got it connected. And the screen just fits really flushly, fits flush with the plastic surround. Then you're gonna take your front carbon plate, and that's gonna hold the screen in place. And then take a ribbon cable and thread it through the little slot, like so. Make sure all your plates are fitted nicely. Uh, you could do this up now, but I generally wait until the end, just so that you can uh, adjust it if you need to. Um, then we're gonna take the back plate and fit that, like so. And yeah, give it a check over, make sure it's all nice and flush. Make sure it's all fitting nicely, like so. Then just take your driver and fit the four count sunk bolts to each side. Like so, now we have the finished screen. You can see there we've got the play playback and the menu buttons on the back. Uh, they, they, they're, sunk, they're sunk within the case so that you can put it down without pushing the buttons, obviously, but they're still really easy to push with your fingers. Just push them on the back. It tells you which side's which, so you've got play on the left and menu on the right. Now if I bring in this Blackmagic 4K I've got, going to want to replace the uh, the bolt nearest the LCD slot there. Going to replace that with a 20 mil so that it can go all the way through the hole on this PCB. And this couldn't be simpler really. 
bit of VHB tape on the back. Peel that off. Line the connector up. You can just feel around it till it kind of goes into place. Push the connector down. The yeah, HV tape there. And uh, obviously use an M2 nut to bolt down on that, and that's going to hold all of that in place so there won't be any movement. Then you can just take your screen when you need to plug it in. I'll push this back a bit. And line it up with the guides, slots it straight in, do the clip up, and away you go. You can use the screen. Because this ribbon is not is really flexible, you can move the screen around all sorts of ways. You can put it on top of your black magic, you can put it on the side, you could maybe little, make a little dock for this to sit in or something like that. Um, and then pop the ribbon out once you're done and yeah it's as easy as that. You can see here on my Blackmagic 4K the connector s sticks out nicely from the top plate so that you can actually get to it easily. This one doesn't have the little clip on it. Um, this, is actually, this was the final prototype before production, that's why it's green. But same principle, you can see it doesn't stick, it sticks out a little bit from the back just to make it easy to put it in and out. And that's it. I hope you like my little solution. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the next video where I'm gonna show you how to use gyro flow with naked black magics and how to get the gyro data off them and put it through gyro flow. And I'm also gonna show you other ways of recording uh, gyro data on any cinematic camera. So stay tuned for that and I'll catch you in the next one. Laters.